Hello everyone and welcome back to the next lecture of control systems. From this lecture, we are going to start a new topic which is signal flow graphs. And in this presentation, we are going to discuss the introduction of signal flow graphs. So, let's get started. Firstly, we will discuss some important points of signal flow graphs. So, moving on to the first point, signal flow graph, SFG, is a graphical representation of block diagrams. We will discuss that how we can represent block diagrams in a graphical manner in signal flow graphs. Moving on to the second point, SFG is also used to determine the overall transfer function of a control system. Like block diagram reduction technique, we will use this signal flow graph to determine the overall transfer function of a control system. Moving on to the next point, SFG is an easier method to determine the overall transfer function as compared to the block diagram reduction as we do not have to reduce the SFG. In case of block diagram reduction rules, we need to reduce the complex multiple subsystem into a single block in order to find out the overall transfer function. But in case of a signal flow graph, we do not have to reduce the SFG. We have a predetermined formula. We can apply the formula and directly calculate the transfer function. And that's why SFG is an easier method. Now, let us take an example on construction of an SFG. We will see that how a signal flow graph is constructed. So, consider the following algebraic equations. Consider these algebraic equations. Y2 equal to A12 Y1 plus A32 Y3 y3 equal to a23 y2 plus a43 y4 y4 equal to a24 y2 plus a34 y3 plus a44 y4 and the last one is y5 equal to a25 y2 plus a45 y4 now let us try to represent these algebraic equations into a graphical manner for that sake let us consider five states which are named as y1 y2 y3 y4 and y5 now let us see the first equation y2 equal to a12 y1 plus a32 y3 in this equation y1 and y3 are independent variables and y2 is a dependent variable now if we want to plot this equation in a graphical manner we need to relate y2 with y1 and y3 so let us try to use this equation to plot a graph. We have y2 equal to a12 y1 plus a32 y3. So we can relate y2 with y1 and y3 as y2 equal to a12 y1 plus a32 y3. We can see that y2 equal to a12 y1 plus a32 y3. I hope you got this. Now moving on to the second algebraic equation which is y3 equal to a23 y2 plus a43 y4. Now in this equation we need to relate y3 with y2 and y4. So we have y3 equal to a23 y2 plus a43 y4. We can see y3 equal to a23 y2 plus a43 y4. In this way, we have completed the second algebraic equation. Now moving on to the third equation which is y4 equal to a24 y2 plus a34 y3 plus a44 y4. In this equation, we need to relate y4 with y2, y3 and y4 itself. Let us see that how we can do it. So we have y4 equal to a24 y2 plus a43 y4 plus a44 y4 we can see that y4 is equal to a24 y2 plus a34 y3 plus a44 y4 in this way we have shown the third algebraic equation in the graphical manner now moving on to the last algebraic equation which is y5 equal to a25 y2 plus a45 y4 so, we need to relate y5 with y2 and y4. So, we have y5 equal to a25 y2 plus a45 y4. We can see here y5 equal to a25 y2 plus a45 y4. In this way, we have represented all these algebraic equations into a graphical manner. 
and you know this is the signal flow graph of these algebraic equations. Now you must be wondering that how we can show block diagrams into signal flow graphs. These are the algebraic equations. So wait for that. We will discuss that how we can convert block diagrams into signal flow graph in the later section of this lecture. As of now, we are done with the introduction of a signal flow graph. We will now discuss the elements of a signal flow graph. So moving on to the elements of a signal flow graph. This is the signal flow graph that we just created by the use of four algebraic equations. And we will use this SFG in order to understand all the elements of a signal flow graph. So moving on to the first element, which is the nodes. While constructing an SFG, the junction points that are used to represent variables are called as nodes. So these junction points, which are used to represent the variables are called as nodes. So in this signal flow graph, we have five nodes, which are Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, and Y5. Moving on to the next element, which is the branches. The nodes are connected together by lines called branches. The signal travels from one node to another node along these branches. We can see that these five nodes are connected together with some lines. And all these lines are called as branches. For example, node Y1 is connected with node Y2 via this branch. Similarly, all these nodes are connected with each other via some lines which are called as branches. Moving on to the next element, which is the input node or the source. The node which has only outgoing branches is called as the input node. In this signal flow graph, if we observe this node Y1, we can see that it is only having one outgoing branch. Outgoing branch is the branch in which the signal travels out of the node. We can see that from this node Y1, this signal is traveling out from this node. If you observe this node Y2, signals are traveling out of this node. That is, this node is having outgoing branches as well as some signals are traveling into this node. That is, this node is having incoming branches. Similarly, all these nodes Y3, Y4 and Y5 are having incoming branches. But only this node Y1 is having an outgoing branch. And that is why this node Y1 is called as the input node because it is only having outgoing branches and no incoming branch. So I hope you got this. We will now move on to the next element, which is output node or sync. The node which has only incoming branches is called as the output node. Now, if you observe this node in this signal flow graph, the node Y5, it is only having incoming branches. That is, signals are coming into this node. Signals are not going out of this node. We can see that this node Y5 is having two incoming branches. One is coming from the node Y4 and the other one is coming from the node Y2. But this node is not having any of the outgoing branches. And that is why this node is the output node. If you observe any other node in this signal flow graph, we will see some outgoing branches. And that is why only the node Y5 is the output node. So I hope you got the output node. Now we will move on to the next element, which is the path. It is a traversal of connected branches in the direction of branch arrows such that no node is traversed more than once. So we can say that it is a traversal of connected branches in the direction of branch arrows. Suppose if we want to move from node Y1 to node Y4, then we can move like this. We can start from Y1 along this branch, we can move to Y2 along this branch, we will move to Y3 and then we will move to Y4. Also, we can start from Y1, we will move to Y2 along this branch and directly we can move to Y4 along this branch. So we have two ways by which we can travel from the node Y1 to the node Y4. And these two ways are called as paths. The first path is from Y1 to Y4 along these branches. We can say the first path is Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4. And the second path is Y1, Y2, Y4. Now, if I ask you, can we travel from the node Y4 to Y2? 
Yes, we can travel from this branch along this arrow to Y3 and then we can travel along this branch to Y2. Now if I ask you that is there any way to travel from Y4 to Y1? No, we can travel from Y4 to Y2 along these two branches because the direction of arrow allows us to move up to Y2. But we cannot travel from Y2 to Y1 because the direction of the arrow is from Y1 to Y2. It is not from Y2 to Y1. And that is why we have written here, it is a traversal of connected branches in the direction of branch arrows. Moreover, in the traversal, no node is traversed more than once. That is, in any path, no node should be counted more than once. If any node is counted more than once, then it is not a valid path. We will discuss this in detail in the upcoming lectures. As of now, I hope you understood the path. We will now discuss the next element which is the forward path. It is a path from input node to the output node. Now we have discussed the path and we know what is a path. So a path from input node, in this case it is y1, to the output node, in this case it is y5, is called as the forward path. Now if I ask you, what are the number of ways by which we can travel from the input node y1 to the output node y5? Let us check this out. If we want to move from y1 to y5, we will start from y1 and we will move to y2 along this branch and we will continue moving along this path to y5. So this is the first path. We can also move from y1 to y2. We can take this branch and move to y4 and then we will move to y5. We have one more path. We can start from y1, we will move to y2 along this branch and we can take this branch to move up to y5. So we can say that we have three different forward paths because there are three different ways by which we can start from y1 that is the input node and we will move up to y5. So the first forward path is y1, y2, y3, y4, y5. The second forward path is y1, y2, y4, y5. And the third forward path is the y1, y2, y5. So now we are done with the forward path. We will now move on to the next element which is forward path gain. It is the product of branch gains encountered in traversing a forward path. So firstly, we will discuss that what is a branch gain. So initially when we discussed the algebraic equations, we had y1, y2, y3, y4 and y5 as 5 states and we related all these states with each other by the use of those equations. Let us consider the first equation in which we related y2 with y1 and y3. What was the equation? Yes, we can recover the equation by the use of this graph only. y2 is equal to a12 y1 plus a32 y3, right? This was the first algebraic equation that we discussed in our example. So y2 equal to a12 y1. So this a12 we need to multiply with y1 and then we will have y2. Similarly, we need to add a32 y3. So we will have y2 equal to a12 y1 plus a32 y3. So this a12 that we are multiplying with y1 is called as the branch gain. The line which is connecting y1 and y2 is the branch and the gain which is associated with this branch is the branch gain. So all these numbers which are written along with these branches which are associated with these branches are the branch gains. For example, this A23 is associated with this branch. This is the branch gain of this branch. Now moving on to the forward path gain. So the forward path gain is the product of branch gains encountered in traversing a forward path. That is, the product of branch gains when we are traveling along a forward path is called as the forward path gain. Now just now we discussed that there are three forward paths. The first forward path is this one. The second forward path is along this branch up to this output node. And the third forward path is along this branch up to this output node. So we will have three different forward path gains, right? 
Yes, if we multiply the gains associated with all these branches, we will have three different forward path gains. Let us check this out. If we want to calculate the forward path gain of first forward path, which is y1, y2, y3, y4 and y5, we have to multiply the branch gains of these four branches. So the forward path gain of first forward path will be a12 multiplied with a23 multiplied with a34 multiplied with a45. Similarly, if we want to calculate the forward path gain of second forward path, which is y1, y2, y4 and y5, we need to multiply the branch gains of these three branches. So the forward path gain of second forward path will be a12 multiplied with a24 multiplied with a45. And similarly, the forward path gain of third forward path will be a12 multiplied with a25. So now we have understood the forward path gain and we have also calculated the forward path gains of this signal flow graph. We will now move on to the next element which is loop. It is a path which originates and terminates at the same node. For example, if we consider this path from node y2 to node y3, and this path from node y3 to node y2, then we started from node y2, we traveled along this branch up to node y3, and we traveled along this branch up to node y2. That is, we started from the node y2, and we end up in the node y2. So this path, which originates from the node y2, and ultimately it terminates to the node y2, is called as the loop. Similarly, if we start from this node y3 along this branch up to node y4 and we move back from node y4 to y3 along this branch, then we started from this node and we ended up to this node. So this path from y3 to y4 and from y4 to y3 is also called as a loop. We have one more loop here. If we start from node y4 and we travel along this branch and move back to y4, then this is also a loop. But this is a special loop. We will discuss about this loop in the later section of this lecture. As of now, we can say that we have three different loops in our signal flow graph. The first loop is y2, y3, y2. The second loop is y3, y4, y3. And the third loop is y4, y4. So now we know that a loop is a path which originates and terminates at the same node. I hope you got this. We will now move on to the next element, which is loop gain. It is the product of branch gains encountered in traversing a loop. So we have discussed forward path gain, which was the product of branch gains, which encounter in traversing a forward path. Now this is the loop gain, which is the product of branch gains, which encounter in traversing a loop. For example, the loop gain of this loop will be a23 multiplied with a32. Similarly, the loop gain of this loop y3, y4, y3 will be a34 multiplied with a43. And the loop gain of this loop y4, y4 will be a44. So now we are done with the loop gain. Let us now move on to the next element, which is self loop. Loop with only one branch is called as self loop. If you observe this signal flow graph, we have three different loops. The first loop is y2, y3, y2. The second loop is y3, y4, y3. And the third loop is y4, y4. But these two loops have two branches. If you observe this loop y2, y3, y2, it has two branches. The first branch is this one having gain a23 and the second branch is this branch having gain a32. Similarly, this loop y3, y4, y3 is having two different branches. The first branch is this one having gain a34 and the second branch is having gain a43. But if you observe this loop y4, y4, this loop is having only one branch, this branch, which is having again a44. And the loop with only one branch is called as the self loop. So this loop 
y4 y4 which is having only one branch is called as the self loop this self loop plays a very important role in signal flow graph we will discuss this in the later sections of signal flow graph in the upcoming lectures as of now we are done with the introduction of self loop we will now move on to the next element which is non touching loops loops are said to be non touching if they do not possess any common node so if we take the example of this signal flow graph we have three different loops the first is y2 y3 y2 the second one is y3 y4 y3 and the third one is the self loop y4 y4 now if we compare these two loops we can say these two are touching loops why because these two loops have this node y3 as common similarly if we compare these two loops we can say that these two loops are also touching loops why because they also have this node y4 as common but if we compare this loop and this self loop we can say these two are non touching loops because they do not have any common node so we can say that these two loops y2 y3 y2 and this self loop y4 y4 are a pair of non touching loops if there are two non touching loops in a signal flow graph we call them a pair of non touching loops if there are three different non touching loops in a signal flow graph we call them a triplet of non touching loops so in this way we are done with non touching loops and we know that the loops are said to be non touching if they do not have any common node so now we are done with the discussion of elements of a signal flow graph and we discuss them with the use of this signal flow graph we will now discuss that how we can convert block diagrams into signal flow graph so moving on to the equivalent representation of block diagram into signal flow graph in this topic we will discuss that how we can represent basic block diagram elements into signal flow graphs so the first element of a block diagram is a summing point and if we want to represent this summing point into its sfg representation then it is represented as a node we can see that this summing point is having two incoming branches and one outgoing branch and that is why its sfg representation is having a node which is having two incoming branches and one outgoing branch moving on to the second element of block diagram which is a takeoff point we can see here this is a takeoff point and if we want to represent it in its sfg representation it will be represented as a node we can see here this takeoff point is having an incoming branch and two different outgoing branches and that is why this node in its sfg representation is also having one incoming branch and two different outgoing branches now moving on to the third element of block diagram which is a block of gain g if we want to represent this block having gain g into its sfg representation we will represent this with a branch of gain g a block of gain g in block diagrams is represented as a branch of gain g in signal flow graph representation so now we are done with the equivalent representation of three elements of block diagrams we will now move on to the fourth element so the fourth element of block diagram can be a summing point followed by a takeoff point if we want to convert this into a signal flow graph we have two different methods in the first method we can consider this summing point as node a and this takeoff point as node b that is we can consider this summing point and the takeoff point as two different nodes now if we convert this into its signal flow graph representation we will have this we have converted them into two different nodes there is one more way by which we can represent this system into its signal flow graph representation we can consider this summing point and this takeoff point as a single node and now if we want to represent this system into its signal flow graph representation we will have this we can see that this summing point and this takeoff point combinedly have two different incoming branches and two outgoing branches 
and that's why its equivalent SFG representation is replaced by a single node which is having two incoming branches and two outgoing branches. I hope you got this. Now we will move on to the fifth representation. If we have a takeoff point followed by a summing point and if we want to represent this system into its equivalent SFG representation then also we have two different ways. In the first method we can consider this takeoff point as node A and this summing point as node B. That is we can consider this takeoff point and the summing point as two different nodes. And now if we want to convert this into its equivalent SFG representation, we will have this. See, we have converted them into two different nodes. Moreover, we have one more way by which we can represent this system into its equivalent SFG representation. We can consider this system as a single node. And if we consider this takeoff point and this summing point as a single node and now if we want to convert this into its equivalent SFG representation, we will have this. See, if we consider this as a single node, we will have two outgoing branches and two incoming branches. And that is why this single node is having two incoming branches and two outgoing branches. Now I want you all to observe these four representations carefully. They are very important and will be used in the upcoming lectures. I hope you are done. So now we are done with the equivalent representations of block diagrams into signal flow graphs. In the next lecture, we will discuss the Mason's gain formula by which we can calculate the overall transfer function of the given block diagram representation. We will also discuss that how we can convert a block diagram into its equivalent signal flow graph. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.